I think this is a great place to start because here we have um, the beginning of the ideal of the paintings that we're going to find, uh, the frescoes that we're going to see mm -hmm. here, of Friar Angelico, who was um, a friar, a Dominican friar who lived sure. here and who worked here like in the 15th century, in the first half of the, of the 15th century. And um, why we want to start here is that we have, uh, this is Dominic, Saint Dominic, and he's looking at Christ. And the fact that here we have Dominic who's trying to feel the same passion as Christ, it's, but he's very humble, he's suffering, he's looking at him in the eyes, he's staring at him in the eyes, and he wants to create a spiritual connection. Yeah. So already from, from this first fresco here, yeah. in the we are in the cloister, in the yeah. first cloister of uh, St. Marco Basilica, sure. and we have the idea of what the type, the type of paintings, the ty type of frescoes and images that we're going to see. This is a very spiritual place. And you also have a kind of a metaphysical mm. environment. You know, it's, it's you have a rock, yes, the, the sky, lapis lazuli, very, very expensive, mm. and very expensive material. Because of the blue color? Yes. This was extremely, extremely expensive. So to do like a huge fresco with blue like this means yeah. spending a lot of money. Uh, but luckily, you know, the, the friars here could afford it because the Medici sponsor for all yeah. this. <laughs> um, and also it's like, you know, you don't have like really a, a, a specific setting. Mm -hmm. So it's like a really a metaphysical place because um, Beat Angelico, Friar Angelico, when he painted this, he wanted people to concentrate on the message. I see. On the scene, you see the blood running down, like, you know, Christ is really beginning, you know, the, the, the blood dropping from the, from the hands, mm. the suffering. It's really a spiritual, metaphysical connection between St. Dominic and Jesus. And so heaven and earth, right? Yes, exactly, and heaven and earth. And yes, um, where did he learn this? Oh, no, this is an interesting period of time because we call this the early Renaissance in Florence. Yeah. Uh, we are in the 14th, late 1430s, early 1440s. Um, of course, before him, before Friar Angelico, who came from near Florence and he lived and worked here in Florence, then he once went to work to Ro in Rome, mm. he came back, there was Masaccio. Oh, there was the, the Brancati Chapel. Yes, right. in the Brancati okay. Chapel. Uh, Masaccio, who was active only for about 27 years, he I died see. very young, uh, about 10 years before this, Dad had worked in the Brancati Chapel. Oh wow! And had taught this lesson of perfect architecture and perspective, right? Perspective and like completely spaced out environment. Yeah. Wow! It's something like it's like you, you, you have to kind of go metaphysical. Yeah. So it's really incredible. And of course, before him, there was Giotto a century before. So this tradition yes. of working with architecture in kind of like this kind of um, metaphysical environment came yeah. already from a long Florentine tradition. The Angelico, or Friar Angelico, is a transitional uh, artist mm. because he still has in him um, the influence of the late Gothic art. Right. He was... Uh, and like for me, that would be in the, the, the blood and the sort of realness that, that you see in the Gothic art. Yes, and also in the figures because they're yeah. very elegant, they're very long. Yes. No, they're very, very slim. And in the, in the details and in the use of colors, mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, he before becoming like a, a painter, he worked uh, as an illuminator, you know, painting and drawing manuscripts. Mm. So that's where he learned certain techniques. Uh, in fact, here we have a very beautiful library where he also worked. Okay. He also in illuminated some of those manuscripts that we have here, and and so he has this kind of he's a transitional artist. And why this is a good place to start? Because let's look around. I mean, this is a beautiful, perfect yeah. geometry, you know, cloister, you know, done in Renaissance style. Now, there was a medieval building here. Sure. But um, Cosimo the Elder, who was really the, the beginner of the dynasty of the Medici family, became the protector of Florence in 1434. Okay. And he was very religious. Okay. Uh, and he wanted the Dominican friars to have a home here in the center of Florence near his house okay. because this is actually the whole San Marco neighborhood is actually the quarter of the Medici family. Oh wow, okay. So in the north center of Florence they had a 
beautiful palaces where they did magic. <laughs> <laughs> here they had a garden where all the artists used to come. And he wanted to create a space for like spiritualism. And sure. here they was created mm-hmm. the first public library in Western world. That's incredible. So it's, it's all thanks to the Medici. All thanks to the Medici, <laughs> yes, yes. And he paid for all this you know, art to yeah. be around. That's why we can have colors that are very expensive. And this is the first thing you walk in exactly. when when you walk in, you see this magnificent select. piece. You want to select this is the this is the type of art you're gonna see. You know, it's not like a frivolous art. It's mm-hmm. very spiritual, mm-hmm. very beautiful, perfect, mm-hmm. elegant. But this is a mystical place. Right. Spiritual place. And important spiritual people live here. So we're not we're not getting away from that message, no, really. No, no. And uh, is yeah, Saint Dominic? So these were Dominicans that yes. lived here. I see. They still do because you oh. still have part. You can only be. So I have to behave. <laughs> 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 you can only be part of because the Dominicans actually live here uh-huh. still. So okay. yes, this is a okay. it's still a, a very important spiritual place. In Florence, the, the main center of the Dominicans is in the church in the Basilica of Santa Maria Novella, mm-hmm. and, a, and a very incredible place also to visit. Uh, but this is really the, the height of the mysticism of the mm-hmm. Dominicans because uh, very important uh, Dominican intellectuals spent time here and they study and they did their chapters. Chapters means they had their, let's say, assembly and meetings where they voted. This is an important room okay. of, of the whole. So what would have been happening in this cloister here during the time of the Medici? Well, here you would have people, first of all, people relaxing. Mm-hmm. Because we have to think a cloister of spaces where people would actually come out and relax in meditation, mm. quiet places. And yeah. this is really important. Then you would have many artists and people who would come and visit uh, the friars who would wake here to mm-hmm. be welcomed inside. Uh, 